Hello. So we've taken a look at the quantum harmonic oscillator. Um, we've studied it using ladder operators or raising and lowering operators. Um, let's look a little bit at the philosophy as to what we're doing there. Uh, and it's the philosophy of what's called second quantization. Sometimes this has a Z instead of an S. So let's remind ourselves of the problem. So the time independent Schrodinger equation reads as follows. Our potential is just half M omega squared X squared. Um, and we can rewrite it in terms of raising and lowering operators A dagger and A in the following form, uh, where A dagger A here is naturally interpreted, naturally interpreted as an operator N uh, called the number operator, which returns the integer N labeling the state, where N is an integer um, greater than or equal to zero. So uh, let's draw the potential. It looks something like this. Uh, and the real parts of the um, X projected eigenstates uh, at a particular instant in time look like this. So they look something like this. Um, so we have evenly spaced energy levels uh, separated by energies h bar omega. The ground state itself, the lowest energy state, has only h bar omega over 2. And we can solve for the wave functions themselves by starting from the ground state, which we can deduce either using the Hermite polynomial method, um, or we can deduce it by using the definition of the ground state, which is that uh, the lowering operator acting on the ground state gives a number zero. Um, using that method, we can deduce uh, in the position basis, we have this. This expression, a Gaussian form, and all higher energy uh, eigenstates can be found uh, using the raising operator on that state. So A dagger acting on the state N gives square root N plus 1 acting on the state N plus 1, and that's properly normalised. OK, but let's take a look at what uh, we're actually doing here a, a bit more philosophically. So this uh, operator A dagger A, we've said is called the number operator because it just returns the number of the state here, whether this is state 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Um, and because these, the levels of these energies are spaced uh, by the same amount each time, h bar omega, there's a very natural interpretation to this, not in terms of wave functions, but in terms of particles sat in as well. Um, so in quantum mechanics uh, in this course, we're always dealing with uh, single particles at a time. But um, in this case, uh, it's very natural to interpret the nth energy level here. Um, you, can, you can certainly interpret it as a wave function, which happens to have energy h bar omega n plus a half. We've done that already. But we can also interpret it as n individual particles sat in a well, where each particle has energy um, h bar omega, uh, plus a ground state energy that we don't need to worry too much about. And so this is the basis of what's called second quantization. So uh, in their uh, quantum field theory textbook, Lancaster and Blundell have a very nice way of phrasing this. They say that first quantization, which is what we've been looking at, uh, at least in the first half of this course, is saying that particles ha can have wave-like properties in quantum mechanics. Okay, we've been describing particles using the Schrodinger equation, which is a wave equation. Um, they say that, so that's first quantization, describing particles like waves. Second quantization, they say, is describing waves like particles. Because uh, the same description that we're using here, um, so these are wave-like things, these are wave functions, and we're saying, okay, here's the, um, this is the, uh, so we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, so this is the um, n equals 3 wave function, it's a form of wave, but we could also say this is just like 3 particles, each of energy h bar omega, sat in a well. Okay, so this is saying that uh, second quantization is saying waves, are describing waves as uh, particle-like. And of course that should always work. We should have this kind of wave-particle duality where we can use either description. Okay, so um, the properties of these particles, we know that having multiple particles in the same well, in the same state, uh, means that uh, they must be bosons. Okay, so it's n bosonic particles in the well because we have the um, uh, Pauli exclusion principle tells us that uh, no two fermions can have the same set of quantum numbers. So it's, it's a, a bosonic quantum well. There is in fact a fermionic version of this which you can study. Uh, it, it's uh, not too much harder. Okay, so let's recap that in bullet points. 
The energy eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator are evenly spaced by uh, energies h bar omega. When we have uh, energy eigenvalue En, uh, we can either think of that as the nth excited state uh, within the uh, harmonic oscillator, or we can think of it as n bosons, uh, n independent bosons of energy h bar omega each. The ground state of the system, the lowest possible energy, is not zero. Uh, it's, there's a zero point energy or a ground state energy, uh, which is equal to h bar omega over two. And we can express uh, the eigenstate n uh, by the ground state zero acted on n times by creation operators n. And similarly, we can lower uh, the state um, using lowering operators. So this last point uh, is central to why uh, the raising and lowering operators are so important. Um, they actually give us the generalization to something we're not going to study in this course, which is when we include a relativistic effects into quantum mechanics. So it turns out that um, in order to include special relativity and quantum mechanics together, you have to allow the number of particles to vary. It's impossible to keep it fixed. Um, and in order to do that, we develop what's called quantum field theory or QFT for short. So quantum field theory treats all of space-time as um, a big uh, quantum field, and it depends which kind of particle you're working with, each will have its own type of quantum field, uh, and the particles are excitations out of that quantum field. Now mathematically what we do is we start with a vacuum state for the universe, so vacuum everywhere, and if we want to create a particle at position x, we use a raising operator from the harmonic oscillator um, problem, uh, and we act it at position x. So we'd say if there's a particle located at position x, we've acted a raising operator uh, located at x in quantum field theory onto the vacuum state, where this is actually often denoted uh, zero. So um, the quantum field theory describes the universe as uh, made up of quantum fields uh, for different particles, and the particles are excitations out of those fields. Um, and Mathematically, what it does is assign a, a simple harmonic oscillator, a quantum harmonic oscillator, at each point in space. And it describes um, the, uh, the emergent universe coming out of that as excitations of those harmonic oscillators. So by solving the uh, harmonic oscillator problem in quantum mechanics, that's the basis for all of quantum field theory. The simplest example of this, to my mind, is when we look at sound traveling through crystals. So a crystal has a regular periodic array of atoms. Uh, when sound travels through it, it's a vibration passing through the crystal. And of course, that admits a description in terms of waves. Uh, but second quantization allows us to write waves in terms of particle excitations. And so rather than saying there's a wave with uh, a certain energy in the system, we can instead say that uh, there's a set of excitations of these different um, harmonic oscillators, or in this case, it's just each atom literally vibrating about a point, just like a spring being held in place by the neighboring atoms. Uh, and we can re-describe what in one picture is a wave as a set of oscillations of these oscillators. Um, and then we're just using this description in terms of uh, bosons uh, from the simple harmonic oscillator picture. Okay, thank you for your time.